So in the last episode, we talked about the six orbiters that are currently around Mars. In this episode, we're going to go a little bit more in depth in the 2001 Mars Odyssey spacecraft and the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter and discuss what their purpose was, what they are able to discover, and how well they have worked over the past 16, 17 years. So let's talk about that. So to begin, let's talk about the 2001 Mars Odyssey. 2001 Mars Odyssey, the name itself, was inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 Space Odyssey. Now, Odyssey itself was actually pretty interesting. It launched on April 7, 2001 on a Delta II rocket. And it was actually able to launch on a Delta II because it was because it saved 440 pounds doing a method called aerobraking. So what is aerobraking? When Odyssey came in around its orbit in Mars, it used the upper layers of the Martian atmosphere to actually slow down and lower its altitude. Now, it didn't lower the altitude that it was on, but the orbital mechanics of it made it so that it lowered the other side or the apogee of its orbit. Now, another fun fact about Odyssey is that it was not only an instrumentation spacecraft, but it also acted as a telecommunications relay. And 85% of the images that we have seen and came from Spirit and the Opportunity rover actually came through Odyssey and its ability to take it from Spirit and Opportunity and then to send them back home here on Earth. Odyssey's placement about Mars is actually pretty interesting. It's in what's called a sun-synchronous orbit. This means as Mars goes around the sun, Odyssey's orbit slightly changes so that the pictures that it takes at different times of the day will have the same lighting effects as it would any other Martian day. So every single day, it will get the exact same lighting effects at 1 o'clock or at 2 o'clock. As I mentioned, this is called a sun-synchronous orbit. Now why is that useful? It's useful because if you want to take pictures of different locations at different days, but at the same time, you can get different understandings of what it's going to look like and different lighting effects so that you know, okay, this is about the same shade. These are different shades. Why is that different? So something else that is interesting about Odyssey is after just a few months of being around Mars, it was able to determine that just a few feet or about a meter underneath the surface, there was showing of a lot of traces of hydrogen, which could have meant that there's ice underneath, which could mean that there's a lot more water than we think on Mars. And then later, it was actually theorized that there was water on Mars, which means that this distribution might actually be correct. Now. What is Odyssey doing now is still a telecommunications relay, and it's actually really nice because since it's sun synchronous, it flies over Curiosity twice a day, and that means that they're able to predict when we'll be able to talk to it and we'll, when we'll be able to send data back from Curiosity. So the next orbiter that we're going to talk about is actually the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO, and this launched on August 12th of 2005 on an Atlas V rocket. And the MRO is a little bit different than Odyssey. So the MRO was focused a lot on imaging, sensor data, and also a better telecommunications broadcast. Now to put this into perspective, Odyssey was able to send about 1,012 gigabytes of data, whereas MRO is able to do 34 terabytes of data to send back. Now that is about 34 times stronger that MRO was able to do than Odyssey. So this is a big upgrade. Now talk about the imaging. It's actually able to take images so precise that in certain areas, it can be fine enough to determine objects that are anywhere from three feet or a meter in diameter at size on the surface of Mars, which is pretty phenomenal for an orbiter to be able to do. Now, three feet, a meter wide, that means it's able to take pictures of, well, rovers. As you can see now, there's a picture of Opportunity. Later, it took pictures of Viking and different things such as Curiosity landing during its sequence. It's actually very phenomenal. So MRO was also able to do a lot of other really interesting things imaging wise. It was able to determine about the approximation of Martian ice caps and determine that is about 197,000 cubic miles of ice. Now that might sound like a lot, but it's not that much. It's only about 30% of how much ice is in Greenland. But still, that's a quite a bit of water that could be on, on Mars and potentially underneath from what Odyssey was able to determine. Now, there was also a really interesting phenomenon where there was an impact on the surface of Mars. And when they took images of it, there was ice where the impact had occurred, which means that there was ice underneath the surface. And they were able to take images of it slowly melting away over a few day and few week time frame. Now, MRO was also able to get an image of an avalanche, which was fairly cool because you could see how similar things that happened on Earth 
also occur on Mars if you're taking pictures in the right place at the right time. Now lastly, in 2011, MRO detected what could possibly have been flowing salt water on Mars. Now, this wasn't 100% sure because they were just images taken from the orbiter, but then Curiosity would later find in 2015 that that's in fact true, that it's able to, that salt water does in fact flow on the surface of Mars through dunes and through sand, which means that MRO was actually right four years earlier than what we were able to determine with the rover on the surface. So now that we've covered Odyssey and MRO and the different discoveries that they made, images that they took, and telecommunications protocol that they went through, in the next episode, we're going to talk about the next NASA mission, the next NASA orbiter, which is MAVEN, and why it's so important and what it's been able to discover over the last couple of years. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.